is proud and honored to present the first ever European final in Danish basketball history, as this upcoming game will decide the winner of the third version of the European Golf Basketball League. And especially all welcome to our visitors from Asil Hirsch, PC Schulen, and CSEO Volotari. Tonight we'll see some exciting into an action, some of the best basketball in Europe. The guest team from Cesar Volontari will play to the, tonight's game with the following lineup. Number zero, Kwame Mitchell. Number one, Lucas Tohatan. Number two, Dijon Fiesel. Number six, Laszlo Polia. Number ten, Titus Lukao. Number fifteen, Mikhail Michalo. Number twenty-two, Alessandro Ola. Number twenty-five, Trevor Mel. Number 32, J.T. Schumann, number 35, Stanley Lina, and number 44, Oli Justin. Head coach, Adam Pagaskis, assistant coaches, Dan Johan and Alex Rowan. Ladies and gentlemen, the home team from Panthers will play today's game with the following lineup. Good evening, basketball fans, and welcome to the European North Basketball League. It is the championship game. The home team, the home crowd, the Bakken Bears here from Denmark will be taking on the guest CSO Voluntari. Well, there is a reason why these two teams are playing in this year's final, and... Whoever is crowned champion tonight, it will be the first time in club history as they will be champion of the EMBL. Voluntari beating uh, Liege Basket last night, 79-80. to It went down to the wire, folks. What a game that was. And the Backen Bears with, uh, I would say, a comfortable lead over BC uh, Shaolay, 77-90 yesterday. And just like in the bronze medal game, not a lot of time for these two teams to, let's say, recover and then prepare for this game. But they're both in the same situation, and coaches knew this is how the schedule was and how the planning was. So they are obviously going to have to try and uh, have their players prepared as best they can. They've trained for this. They've trained for back-to-back -back games. This is not something that they are not used to. And, well, you know what? It's a 40-minute game. You give it all you have because you want to be hoisting the trophy at the end of 40 minutes. And, well, the last game was a little bit quiet, but not now is it looks like we have a sold-out crowd, folks. And I think there's a big reason why the organization, the club of the Back and Bears here from uh, Aras, Denmark, wanted to host this event because they truly believed in this team. They believed in the coaching staff. They believed in everyone who helps, the physios, the, the, the trainers, the strength and conditioning coaches, and let's not forget the coaches and players, that this team has a good chance of winning, and that is why they're hosting. Well, there you see it. It is the European North Basketball Leaf, the Backen Bears, taking on CSO Voluntari. And both teams winning yesterday in, um, in their semifinal games as we see uh, the head coach Anders Sommer for the Back and Bears. And all of these coaches actually uh, coaching these four final four teams are, are ex-professional players and they have also been coaching for a while. So they are experienced. Uh, they know what it takes as a player. They're player coaches and they also know uh, uh, what it takes as a coach and what to demand of their players as we see uh, Ayanyars Bagatskis for uh, CSO Voluntari. And well, if you follow this league, you know that it is a league that is slowly growing. This is the third year, and you have countries and clubs. There he is, sorry. Einars uh, Bagatskis uh, for Voluntari. Um, you know, it's a, it's a league that is slowly growing. Uh, there's a lot of clubs from many, many different countries now participating in this event. 
Um, the only country to at least have a representative all three years is uh, Lithuania. As um, the Back and Bears, they beat the team from Lithuania yesterday. Uh, Basket Club Shaole. So, well, are we going to crown a new winner? That is definitely sure. As there are the referees for tonight. Uh, Lucius from Latvia, Zabowski from Poland, and Andra Andrada Sender from Denmark will be calling tonight's game. So congratulations to those coaches. It's obviously also an honor for them to call the championship game. And it is a reflection of the hard work and the consistent, uh, I would say, uh, refereeing that they have demonstrated all season long calling these games for the EMBL that they get the nod to to call this championship game between the home team back in Bears and CSO Voluntari, the visitors. Well, this is definitely a lot more noise and a lot more excitement as we see the crowd getting into it. They are playing along. They are excited. The cheerleaders are out. And they are pumping their pom-poms. And they are ready to get this game started as we are uh, minutes away from tip-off. And I'll talk about uh, some, some statistics, excuse me, um, some statistics uh, during the game from some of these players throughout the season. Um, and also, uh, obviously, what happened uh, yesterday, because we need to point out some uh, great performances and reasons why, uh, you know, teams are playing in this game as the game moves on. Well, we are moments away from tip-off of this championship game here. This year's 2023-24 European North Basketball League. Oh, good evening, folks and basketball fans from around the world, and welcome to the championship game of the European North Basketball League. It is the home team, the Backen Bears, taking on CSO Voluntari, the visitors, as that ball is stripped and all the way to the basket. No good. Not going to be. Sh not sure if it's going to be counted as a block or not. And whoa, great. Ball reversal and heads up play, roller rolling hard, and a little bit of a high low look as Voluntary get on the uh, score clock first with that uh, Nakiara basket. And the Bear team wanting to get on the basket. Can they Can I get on the scoreboard? Excuse me, no, but they come up with the offensive rebound. Offensive rebound leads to a nice cut, and that shot's blocked, though, so no good there as well. Nice defensive effort after giving up the offensive rebound, and, well, we saw it the last time down. Uh, a little bit of a high-low look. That time no good. Follows the rebound, and that one rattles in, so nice little start here by Voluntary as Kayshawn uh, Fiesel gets on the board for them. He had 13 points, seven rebounds yesterday in their semifinal re uh, win just throughout his season average. Uh, and that is going to be a foul. Uh, 
So, a little bit of a reach and foul. Wanted to prevent the easy basket uh, by uh, uh, Titus uh, Nekiara. And, well, the Bears still looking for their first points of the game. As that shot is no good by Ryan Evans. And second shot, no good as well. So... The home team still looking for their first points of this game. They go inside. One-on-one -on -one coverage. And tough, tough basket. I was going to say use your left hand, but Jay uh, Schumat says no worries. I can finish with my right. Maybe a little bit of a, a height and a size mismatch. On that play, uh, Jay Schumet. Well, it's a 6-0 lead for the visitors. Scored last time down. He says, why not this time? But great defensive effort saying straight up read the shot and is able to get a block on that one. And like I mentioned, the Beckham Bears still looking for their first points of this game. Skip pass. Penetration. And way to take the contact and get your first three points is Malik Parsons, who had a huge game yesterday. 19 points, roughly five points more than his season average uh, for the Beckham Bears in that semifinal win. And that three-point shot rolls in. So good patience and nice team play. Trevor Al Trevon Allen, excuse me, on the board. Uh, he averages uh, 15 points a game for this team throughout this season in the EMBL. Pull-up jump shot, front rim, hustle for the offensive rebound. And it is good. So they have a new shot clock. Well, Parsons with the fancy uh, footwork and a little bit of a spin move as he gets all the way to the basket again and has the first four points for the Bears. Allen gives it up. They go inside. Diesel turns around. His shot is no good. Easy rebound. And now with an opportunity to push the tempo. Oh, well, blocking foul. I thought he was a little bit out of control. That's uh, Gustav uh, Knudsen. Let's take a look here. Well, they're kind of saying maybe he was uh, kneed or tripped a little bit. So he pushes the tempo and his aggressiveness is rewarded. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure... Uh, Bagatskis, uh, Coach Bagatskis, uh, excuse me, is probably not too happy with that call, which I can kind of understand, but I always think that players who who are the more aggressive ones, either defensively or offensively, usually get the favor of the call from the referee, and that's exactly what we saw there by uh, Nudson getting all the way to the basket, drawing the foul, and earning himself a trip to the free throw line. He knocks down his first two buckets of the game. A little bit of a full court press here by the Bears after those made free throws. And no worry there by Voluntary if they get the ball over the court, uh, half court line easily. And corner three point shot, no good. Offensive rebound. And I'm not sure. I think it's going to be a defensive rebounding call. Uh, foul. Ball on the baseline. And they get it in. Back up to the point guard, Tohatan. A little shake and bake. Ooh, nice defensive hands. Gets the ball back. Shot clock going down. Almost blocked three times in a row. Gets a shot off, but that's going to be a 24-second call. 
So great, great hands and great defense. Look at this. Moves his feet. Quick hands. Comes back. Ready to defend. Stays down. Taps the ball again. And so just a great defensive effort there by Skylar Bolin. As his defense cannot lead to good offense for the Bears. And it does a little bit of a hang time on that shot for Parsons. So slow start. And they found their rhythm. And it's definitely started on the defensive end as Voluntari lead by one. Five minutes into this first quarter. And another block. But no, that time it's going to be a foul call saying... He hit his uh, elbow, so Gustav uh, Knudsen. And uh, he's going to be rewarded for a block on the first play and got called for the foul on the second play. So good job there by number 32, Jay Schumatz, staying with the ball and going up hard again. As he knocks down both of his free throws. Well, we knew this was going to be a good game. We knew this was going to be an exciting game. Obviously, uh, the back and bears, they want to say feed off the home crowd as Parsons, oh, gets all the way to the basket again. And how are you going to stop that man? That's already his third layup if, of this game so far. And here, almost coming up with a steal on defensive end. No good. So Hatton thought about it. A little hesitation. Step back. His two-point jumper. No good. Fight for the rebound. And great fight there underneath the basket is Titus Nikiara. And some substitutions now for the Bears. And I'm not too surprised that we see some early substitutions. Early substitutions. I mean, they played six minutes consecutive. But both teams played last night. And it's a 40-minute game. It's a long game. It's a 7 p.m. tip-off start. You kind of want to try and keep uh, some of your star players, your starters. Fresh legs. Ooh. Well, no foul on that call. That was almost going to be a, a poster dunk. Well, how about that, though? Running the offense. Look at this. He was the last player back after tipping the defensive rebound. And big man runs the floor and is rewarded is Pinkney. Another good defensive possession. Well, on his last dunk, he got the lead. And that three, no good. Nice offensive rebound, though. As kicked out, skip pass, missed one. That one rolls in and out as well. How about this fight, though? And look at that. The jersey in black comes up with a rebound around three white jerseys. And a little hook shot in the key is no good by Sylvester Berg. Uh, I feel like that is a first whistle in a long time where play has stopped. It has been back and forth with some exciting scoring. And also good defensive plays, aggressive defensive plays. The pace of this game has been uh, the most exciting thing in my opinion. Excuse me, that was a, a number six. On the other end, it was uh, Alf Pedersen. Well, offensive rebound after the free throw. That three-point shot, no good as the Bears come up with a rebound. And Churchill slowing it down a little bit. The 
to go inside. And that's going to be a turnover. A chance for the team in white to push the tempo. They do. And good job giving back on defense as they didn't really give anything wide open. And that shot by Justice was off the mark. Well, foul inbounds on the sideline. They get it in, and they go inside. Oh, great heads-up play. Doesn't force it. Pinkney finds the cutter, and that is unselfish basketball, folks. You know, he could have tried to draw the foul, score himself, but he says no need. I saw where the help side was coming from as they get a stop on the other end. And now with an opportunity, another opportunity to take the lead, the Bears skip pass. And tough, tough take. And going to earn himself a trip to the free throw line. So... Coming off the bench, sorry about that, his name is Sylvester Berg. I had that written down, and it confused me because the uh, uh, box score said something different, so sorry about that. Well, nice little rotation player is him as he's come in and given a little bit of a spark, especially on the offensive end, a couple offensive rebounds, and being aggressive as he earned himself a trip to the free throw line, makes one or two. And two or two. One on one and then two or two. Well, voluntary now. They go inside to the big man and right away smart foul by the Bears as they have fouls to give. So that's gonna go against Michel Dioff. They get the ball in, little hesitation, draws two, and that three-point shot off the mark as the Bears come down with the rebound. Well, nice transition offense as no one stops the uh, ball. Noah Churchill goes all the way to the basket on that drive. Ooh, nice hands, Berg. And talk about hustle plays as he is excited about his effort and his teammates are as well. Look at this. Look at this. Nice hands. And then who wants it more? Well, both of them. That's a big time hustle play. And that's a big time uh, play about how important every possession is, especially in a championship game. Nice block, stays with it, gets his own rebound, kicks it out. They almost turn it over. Shot clock's winding down. They got to let it go. They do. I think it was off in time and not able to score, though. And now, uh, voluntary. They're going to take their time and use all the game clock as shot clock is turned off. And Justice not able to score. They give it back. There's a few seconds left. And that's going to count if it goes. But it doesn't. So what a great first quarter we have here in Denmark. As the Beckham Bears, well, they started slow. And then they came alive at the end of that 10 minutes. And they are leading. After 10 minutes... 
14 to 8. There, there you sorry, 18, 14 to 8. 18 to 14. The Bears are leading. So just a exciting, I would say, maybe it took them about four minutes to really, really get going. And then uh, they found their legs. And Volatari, nice start, though, as we'll take a quick, a quick look at some of the statistics for you guys. So obviously uh, uh, number 25, uh, Trevon Allen, he uh, came out firing six points and you expect that I mean he's you know the the leading uh, point scorer on this team all season long averages 15 points a game for them he has six points and we have uh, Fizel with four points as well as Jay Schumat he has four for voluntary and then a quick look for the back and bears um, how about Parsons he had six points all getting to the basket easily and then knocks down a little floater so he has eight points total so a great start for him and then we obviously have number six sylvester berg off the bench i thought he was excellent for them he has four points and everyone else contributing a point or two here so well we knew this final was going to be an exciting game, and that is exactly what we have here as you get to watch some highlights from the first 10 minutes of action. Unselfish play, and that's what you love. And then look at that defense right after. Well, second quarter action underway, and it's going to be a moving screen call. And they made the basket, and who is it? It is Sylvester Berg doing a little bit of everything that his team needs, especially defensively. He is locked in, folks. And Coach uh, Bagats uh, Bagatskis, excuse me, uh, not too happy with... The way some of the calls have gone for him, but guess what? It's a 40 minute game, and I promise you it averages out at the end of the game. Well, the Bears now with an opportunity to push their lead. They go inside to Berg. Berg penetrates, finds a cutter, and just not able to hold on to the ball. So, ball goes back, and that was off of uh, Michel Diouf. And Voluntari now. They go inside. Ooh, nice dig in defense there. Uh, the guard defender uh, won't be rewarded for the steal, but definitely participated in coming up with that steal. And that three point shot is back iron by Jeff. Justice. Ooh! Well, that was a big time ball handling move. Finish, not so much. Is uh, not getting back on defense and an easy two point bucket. And how about number six, folks? The energy that he has come out with. And there's a reason why he is still in the game. Look at that. He, he knows what he is playing for. He is playing for a championship. Off the bench, number six for the Back and Bears. Has been doing a little bit of everything. He already has five rebounds. He's only rewarded with one steal. Um, but if you were watching the game, you... you you knew it was a little bit more than just one steal. 
um, just because he causes turnovers. Maybe he doesn't come up with them, but he uh, definitely was causing the turnovers. And I believe he has six points, six or seven points already in this game. And Bagatskis doesn't really like what he sees his team doing defensively and maybe not so much offensively as well. So he calls a quick timeout as he doesn't want his team to get down by much more than this. They have been uh, held to zero points so far in this second quarter. Uh, I know only a minute and a half, a little bit less than a minute and a half has gone by. But, uh, you know, it's the fact that you, you've given up points, you haven't scored, and got to kind of calm your team down and maybe switch things up uh, defensively or offensively. So let's see what Coach uh, Bagatskis draws up after this timeout and see what kind of changes they possibly made. Nice little stagger stagger action. They get it back to Justice. Justice gets all the way to the rim, draws a lot of defensive defenders, but that three-point basket is no good. And the Bears now Oh, wow, what a pass. Draws two defenders easily is DeAndre Pinckney and then just finds an open D off underneath the basket for an easy flush home. And great, great job by him. Uh, can Voluntari get on the board in this second quarter? Not with that shot, unfortunately, as defensive rebound is good for the Bears. Well, that's the way you get on the scoreboard. It took them a while, almost three minutes of play, but how about that? A possible four-point play as he was fouled on the three-point shot. So it has been a cold start for Voluntari, but a big-time three-point basket and an opportunity for a four-point play as he's going to the free-throw line. Well, I was going to say, you don't see it often in basketball. And unfortunately, uh, Poliak just not able to convert the four-point play. But he did finally score for his team uh, with that three-point basket, though. And fight for the rebound. It goes off uh, black jersey. So it will stay white ball uh, underneath the basket. A little Spanish uh, pick action. Extra pass to the corner. No good. And fade away. Ooh, a high arcing shot. Nice little shot there by Evans. As he kind of tear drops it in, I guess you could say. Rainbow, rainbow shots it in. Well, he's already made one this quarter. Can he make it two? No, he can't. As Evan comes up with the rebound. And quick three-point shot in the corner. Well, well short. As Voluntari now with an opportunity to push the tempo. They do. Gets all the way to the basket. And maybe drew a little bit of contact. But nice body control is Allen. Well, stop the bleeding a little bit there with that basket. And Voluntari now trying to run their offense. That's a deep three-point shot. 
by uh, by Cody Justice. He had an enormous game last night. 28 points in that one-point win over Liege Basket in the semifinals. And we saw his range last night. Hasn't really found his touch here today, but there's still a lot of game time left to play. Bears now. Trying to get a good look. That three-point shot. Woo. Okay, Ryan Evans. Nice little answer. Justice uses a pick. Extra pass to the three-point shooter in the corner. That hit front iron. And almost maybe got away with a foul, but it was a no-call. As Justice comes up with a steal and a great two-on-one action there as Trevon Allen gets all the way to the basket. But guess what? They leave someone open on the other end. And that three-point bucket hits nothing but net by Skylar Brolin. Kicks it out to Justice. Justice now Ooh, goes inside to his post. Great pass and just cannot convert the easy two-point bucket is uh, Fiesel. And... Well, Shoemate's going to be called for that foul. And that was the uh, bucket before by um, by Ryan Evans. A little, I called it a teardrop or a rainbow shot. And then he knocked down a three after that possession. So nice little quarter by Ryan Evans so far. Ooh, nice ball handling. Gets all the way to basket. No call. Good movement off of penetration and then a double penetration there. Nice left hand finish by Lucas Tohatten. Ooh. Oh, smart foul um, to slow down. Maybe what would have been an advantage, I think. Well, I mentioned it at the end of the first quarter, or midway through the first quarter, I guess I could say. I felt like this game is really up and down. Not a lot of calls, not a lot of stops. Ball's not going out of bounds, not a ton of turnovers that are going out of bounds. As uh, Well, clearly Coach is not too happy uh, with Schumet, as it sounds like he's getting a little bit of an earful uh, coming off in that last possession. And now we have a timeout, so, well, enjoy the cheerleaders, and, well, enjoy my voice as well, because I'll talk a little bit about statistics for you, because uh, this game is fun, and it's very, very interesting. Obviously, uh, some big performances already by a couple players on um, uh, Voluntari. Uh, Trevon Allen has been superb. He already has 10 points for them. And let's not forget Fiesel, maybe a little bit quiet scoring. Uh, missed a couple easy baskets, but he does already have five rebounds to his name and four points. And then for the uh, Bears on the court right now, we have uh, number three, Malik Parsons, who he came out and just attacked the basket. He has seven points to go, sorry, eight points. And what about Ryan Evans? I mean, we saw his uh, five points almost consecutive, I believe. He has seven points now and five rebounds as, long, as well as uh, Sylvester Burke, six points and five rebounds. He was kind of the energy and uh, the bench player who really sparked his team's uh, run and helped them get to this lead right now. 32-23 for the Bears playing in front of their home crowd. Well... I mentioned it. Keyshawn Fiesel, 
missed a couple easy little uh, shots around the basket that time. Nothing but net. And oh, how about that block, folks? Great defensive effort. And will he be rewarded on the other end of the court? Let's see. Oh, great left hand finish outside his body is Lucas Toaton. So really, everyone contributing a little bit by both these teams as it looks like Voluntari now have fallen back into a 2-3 zone. Yes, they have. And, well, that pass to the corner gets it back. Little shot outside the elbow. No good. And offensive rebound is just dribbled out of bounds by Berg. So turnover after the offensive rebound, unfortunately. Well, two minutes and 20 seconds remaining in the first half and exactly what you expect from a championship game. It is a five-point lead. Can Voluntari snap that lead into half? Well, no, but they're going to have another opportunity as that shot was blocked but knocked out of bounds. They're going to have the ball on their baseline. And shot clock down to six. Ooh, nice shot fake. Little pull-up jump shot. Well, can't get much better shot than that. Uh, open pull-up shot by a shooter. And fortunately, just no good. Ooh. I'll make that two turnovers in a row now. As Parsons pass. I saw it. I understand why his teammate couldn't catch it. Wasn't a bad look. You're just going in one direction. The ball was passed to the other direction. And that's uh, only the fourth turnover. I mentioned there's not a lot of turnovers, not a lot of stoppage of play in this game, especially if you compare it to the bronze medal game where... Um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, uh, I just watched the game. Um, BC uh, Shaolei, they went to the free throw line 20 times in the first half and 30 odd in the entire game. Well, that's a turnover. It's a two on one. Defense is coming back. They get back. Good job. But they don't aren't able to stop the big. So good defensive effort leads to an easy bucket by Keyshawn Fiesel and back in Bears they want to call a timeout why not they got timeouts to use so coach uh, Anders Sommer is I imagine going to draw something up offensively and talk about what he wants his team to do uh, these last few possessions that they're going to have on the defensive end as well and exciting atmosphere here As well, second largest city in Denmark, Aras. And they've got a couple professional teams here, handball team, basketball team, obviously. And they clearly like their sports, and they are here out supporting this basketball team. Personally, I'm very impressed with the mascot's uh, roller skating abilities. I wonder if he goes to any roller rinks and, uh, you know, participates in competitions. Do they have roller rinks in Denmark? I'll find out and let you guys know. Well, out of the timeout, what are the Bears going to do? Minute 23 left until halftime. And we have a little bit of a shoelace timeout. Well, full court pressure here by Voluntary. They had a nice start to the game. Cooled off a little bit, but they've done a good job climbing back into this game. They're trailing by three. Can they get a stop here? 
Thought about the shot. No good. Berg penetrates. Loses the ball. Great defensive possession. So they're going to have an opportunity to get a score. Hopefully a stop and then another score before halftime. And they could be leading, folks, because it's only a three-point game. Because it's a championship game. Oh, was that a three or a two? That was a big-time shot, whatever it was. Trevon Allen coming off the screen. Zero hesitation. He lets it fly. What is the response by the Bears? So it was a three. I don't know. I thought maybe his foot was on the line. And that's going to be a foul on the closeout. So it's not a shooting foul. So smart heads up play there by Titus Naguara. As he, you know, knew his team had fouls to give. And they've fallen back into the zone. So it's kind of a 2-3, two, 3-2, three, three, two, depending on the alignment of the offensive team and that three-point shot well that's a response if i've seen one great job there by bolin he had 11 points last night in their win and nice response so they're back up three there's one possession left in this half folks and voluntary have it can they tie the game well they draw a foul as the bears have fouls to give so there's 6.5 seconds remaining on the game clock and Begatskis, uh, coach of CSO Voluntari, has fouls, uh, sorry, timeouts to use. So he uses his last timeout to, I imagine, draw up a play. There's 6.5 seconds left in this half. Look at this rollerblading. He even has cheerleader pom-poms. And, you know, this has just been such a great Final Four. The two, the two semifinals were played here yesterday. Today we had the bronze medal, and we've had the, uh, obviously, this, this medal, the championship game, as well. And just the reception here by the city, by everyone involved. It really is, you know, the European North Basketball League. They are doing a lot of effort to, to grow the league, to have fan support. They want teams. They want cl clubs uh, invested and excited to, to compete and play in this. And obviously all these teams, they play in their domestic leagues as well. But it's another opportunity for them to, well, they have more games. The players have more games. The fans have more games as well. So it's just a great opportunity for all these teams who play in the uh, European North Basketball League. Well, let's see... What the experienced coach, Bagatskis, has drawn up out of the timeout. 6.5 seconds. That's plenty of time. You can have a lot of options. And they get the ball in. Penetration. That's going to be almost an unsportsmanlike foul. That was not a play on the ball, in my opinion. But there's a reason why I'm calling the game and not refing the game. And I think the ref called it more on the reach before he got by, where I think he then ended up grabbing the player. So... The Bears, they use their last foul. Next foul, they're going to put them to the free throw line. And 3.8 seconds on the shot clock now, on game clock, excuse me. And, oh! Wow! What a three-point basket at the buzzer. Trevon Ellen, welcome to the NBL. He says, I can do it just as well as you can as his three-point bucket at the buzzer ties the game and this is what championship games are made of folks it is halftime back in bears 35 cso voluntary 35 it is tied after 20 minutes basketball at three in the morning enough no of course not so you always wanted to be part of the team your own basketball club in your own backyard what if i said you could enbl nine european countries 15 pro teams 60 games a season the fastest growing basketball league in europe in the arena on tv or streaming live on your phone reach out to us and join the enbl family enbl right here in your backyard.
Well, it is halftime here. It's a championship game. There's a few highlights from the first half for you guys. And I will take a quick break and be back for a second half action shortly.
Well, it is halftime here as both teams out warming up again. And couldn't really ask for a more exciting game, in my opinion. It is, is tied. basketball at 3 in the morning enough? No, of course not. So you always wanted to be part of the team, your own basketball club, in your own backyard. What if I said you could? ENBL. Nine European countries, 15 pro teams, 60 games a season. The fastest growing basketball league in Europe. In the arena, on TV, or streaming live on your phone. Reach out to us and join the ENBL family. ENBL, right here in your backyard. Welcome back, basketball fans. It is tied. We couldn't ask for a better championship game. 35 apiece. The back and bears from Denmark. The home team hosting this game. Voluntary. It has been a back and forth game. They had a great start to the game. Back and bears fought their way back. They were up most of that second quarter. And then some big, big time plays. Um, especially at the end of that quarter by Trevon Allen, number 25 for Voluntari. He has had a superb game, 16 points already, 6 to 7 shooting. He is 4 or 5 from the three point line, uh, from the free throw line, and 2 or 2, uh, sorry, 4 or 5 from three point range. And he hit that last three-point back bucket at the buzzer to tie the game. And let's not forget the big man underneath the basket, Keyshawn Fiesel, who's having a great game for them as well. Eight points, five rebounds, and obviously a few other players contributing. And let's go take a look at the back and bears. Well, how about Parsons? Eight points, six points of those right at the beginning of the game, just attacking the basket. And also Ryan Evans, he had five consecutive points at one point, and he has seven points after the first half to go along with five rebounds. Bolin with a couple big three-pointers. He's two of three from three-point range for his six points himself. Um my my favorite player right now so far in the game coming off the bench Sylvester Berg number six he has six points five rebounds and just doing a little bit of everything especially on the defensive play all the hustle plays that's a man that you want on the court when you need hustle plays especially uh ending out a game so well, we're going to crown a new ENBL champion tonight. It's either going to be the Back and Bears or it is going to be CSO Voluntari. We will find out because we still got 20 minutes left to play. Third quarter action almost underway here in Denmark. Where what a final four this has been. The fans have been involved. The players are involved. Everyone knows what's on the line. And let's see... Who is going to have that big second half and help their team to the win? Uh, I would say, you know, if I'm looking at the way players have played all season long and what you expect from a good second half, possibly uh, Cody Justice. He is the one who had 28 points yesterday, number 44 for Voluntari. Um, what about Gustav Knudsen? Big, uh, big contributor yesterday for the Bears, 16 points. Can he get going offensively? Well, who is it? It's Parsons. He gets to the basket, no foul, and not able to convert that layup. So Voluntari with a chance to take the lead again. Ooh. Crossover almost loses it. Ooh, nice hustle play. And he was inbound, so he comes up with a steal. 
So some fancy handling by Allen, but not able to hold on to it. And they go inside to Evans. Evans, turn around. No good. Offensive rebound. He gets it back. Oh. Almost. Almost going to be a pass to the coach and a shot from there. No, I'm kidding. Um, but ball is going to stay here. There's 4.9 seconds on the shot clock. I think the referees want to talk about and make sure that the shot clock is correct. Well, they said you are correct, scores table. Uh, so they have mooted it up. So it's actually nine seconds left on the uh, shot clock. So plenty of time to get a good look if you are a Bears fan. They draw the mismatch, they go up, and that is going to be a shooting foul. So nice read, nice awareness of the mismatch. And it's going to be two shots for DeAndre Pinkney. As he makes the first of two. And make that two of two as the Bears are the first team to score in this third quarter. And that three-point shot, front iron by Tuatan. And Evans is going to get called for the carry. So it's going to be a turnover and back to White's ball. As Cody Justice, big game yesterday. He has been quiet here today. He turns the corner and... Well, baseline penetration, kick, nice ball reversal. A little bit of hang time by Trevon Allen as he draws the foul. And... Allen now with an opportunity to tie the game as he makes a first of two. And make that two of two, so game tied again. And just about 18 minutes left in this game. We can ask for a better championship game. Love to see close games, and you love to see close games. Two of the best teams all season long playing in the final. And that time it is no carry. It's going to be a foul. But foul was called on the dribble. So ball on the baseline. Oh, I like it. A little 1-4 action. Big pops. And then a scream by the inbounder gets the big man open. So great off ball action. And an easy finish for uh, Gustav Knudsen. Ooh, nice cut by Pinkney. Just a heads up play there. I believe it was Parsons finds him cutting in the basket. Fiesel. Shot rolls in and out. So it's a three point lead now for the Bears. Can they add to this lead? Or are Voluntari going to come up with a big defensive stop? Parsons kicks it to the corner. That three point shot. 
goes in and it's going to be a timeout by Voluntari as coach Bagitskis clearly not too happy with the way his team has come out and started this third quarter and coaches always say you know how you start a game and how you start a third quarter can be big deciding factors so a great job by the Bears how are CSO Voluntari going to respond after this timeout from coach See what they're going to run out of this timeout. They're going to change up anything defensively, possibly offensively as well. As Justin now in charge of running the offense, number 44. Justice, excuse me. He goes all the way to the basket. Good defense as that shot is no good. And now the Bears. Well, a little bit of an errant pass. So it's going to be a turnover and then a foul. So Voluntary with another opportunity here to try and get a score. We only scored two points in this quarter so far. Is that five? No, it's not. As Ballin comes up with defensive rebound, pushing it for his team. And nothing but net is DeAndre Pinckney. He had 13 points yesterday. He had seven of those from the free throw line to go along with nine rebounds in their win. And he's averaging 17 points, just under eight rebounds a game. He's got to be a candidate for an MVP award or at least an All-Star 5 award in the EMBL this, uh, this year. Well, the Bears, they have jumped out to a 10-point lead here. It was tied at halftime, folks. And Voluntari have just gone cold from the field. Got to give credit, though, to the Bears defensively. They've done a good job. They've forced some tough shots. And that dunk is no good. And a foul on the rebound. As you saw, Voluntary have fallen back into a zone defense now, trying to change things up defensively. They got to do something. They are outscored in this quarter, uh, two to twelve, and that's why we see a little ten-point lead and an offensive on-ball moving screen foul. So ball right back to the Bears. As uh, well, foul went against Mitchell. You saw him there. A little bit of frustration, I think, uh, more towards himself and his teammates than maybe what the referees are calling. So they're down 10. There's still plenty of time to play in this game, especially when we know basketball is a game of runs. We saw it in the third place game, bronze medal game. We've seen it here tonight in this championship game. So they're still in that zone. It's kind of a 2-3, a 3-2 zone. Sort of a matchup zone a little bit. And that time they foul. Well, at least they didn't give up a shot. Uh, 
Well, they're staying in the zone on the out of bounds, which uh, isn't super common. And uh, three point shot in the corner, front rim, no good. And what do you give up in zones? Well, a lot of times you give up offensive rebounds. Oh, great pass underneath to Evans. Evans, can he finish? He can't. And no good there by Pinkney either. So Voluntari maybe got away, got lucky a little bit. Well, guess what, folks? In the first, no, I think it was the second quarter, excuse me, when uh, Voluntari were having a tough time scoring, it was uh, Poliak who came in and knocked down a three, got fouled, wasn't able to convert the four-point play, and exactly when they needed a bucket, he did it. But you got to get defensive stops, and Parsons left open for a little two-point bucket, three-point bucket, I think it was, actually. So... You make a make a big play on the other end. You got to make a big play on the defensive end as well. Still a 10-point lead for the home team. And that pass just uh, miscalculated. No, they're saying sorry. It was tipped. So it will stay here. There's 14 seconds on the shot clock. Well, the player of the first half was that man right there, Trevon Allen. And been a little bit quiet so far in the first five minutes of this quarter, but that was a big time shot by him. As uh, chipping away at this lead. They're still in that through 2 3 zone, 2 1 2, I guess, because you see the big man coming out all the way to the top. Oh, what a shot! Great response by Pinkney. Mentioned it. He's going to be an all-star five for sure, especially with the way he's played this year, all year long. Yesterday, almost had a double-double. Just needed one more rebound for his team. And, wow. Well, got to figure out how to stop Allen. And then, really, just an unnecessary foul, especially when your team has already committed four fouls. So it's going to casually put the back and bears on the free throw line and that's not what you want to do especially at home they're six of eight in this game 75 percent not a lot of free throws i think the refs have done a good job letting both these teams play but also call what needs to be called as well the hustle player checking into the game number six sylvester berg for the back and bears And makes the first of two. And that shot rolls right out. Well, if there's a player that can bring his team back into the game, it is definitely that man <laughs> right there. But how about that response by Pinkney? He says, you know what? You keep talking about Trevon Allen. I can do what he does as well. Look at this. You can't see the end of the play and why that was called a foul. And it was because the uh, uh, defensive player um, just got, you have to let the offensive shooter land safely. And, uh, you know, I don't think it was on purpose. I don't think, uh, you know, there was anything uh, malicious about the, uh, the contest or the defensive thing, but the defender did slip his foot underneath the offensive player who was coming down from uh, jumping their shot, uh, jumping, taking their shot. And that's what you give up. So how about that? That was a six-point turnaround. You give up an offensive rebound. Ball gets kicked out to Churchill, and he knocks down a three. So obviously, Coach uh, Bagetskis uh, has to call a timeout. And you don't want to let this game get away from you. And that is exactly what is happening right now. The Back and Bear is enjoying playing at home. They know these nets. They know these rims. They know this court better than any team here. 
And that is what we are seeing. But, my gosh, this has been a great, great third quarter. It was tied at half, folks. Tied at half. And now it's 60 to 48. The, the back and bears have already scored 25 points in this quarter alone. And guess what? There's still 3 minutes and 24 seconds left to be played. Uh, let's see what they can do after that timeout. And you know what? A foul is fine. Well, three-point bucket, no good. So, you know, I always think uh, if you can, let's take a look here, Berg. Oh, it's because he lowered his shoulder and it was a good job by the, the defender just moving his feet and, uh, you know, it's one of those. Maybe it could have gone both ways. I don't think it ever would have been a defensive foul, but I think that was a good call there by the referee. Well, can they cut it to 10 or even 9? No good with that shot. So defensive rebound, Parsons' hands. Parsons, a little bit of shaking bacon. Oh, nice little finish by Malik Parsons. Averaged 14.5 points a game all season long. 19 points yesterday. And showing why he is also a candidate for an MVP or an All-Star 5 in this year's Final Four competition as Cody Justice gets all the way to the basket and draws a foul. So he's going to go to the free throw line. And, you know, a, a great way to get back in the game is staying aggressive, stopping the clock, and putting points on the basket, pu putting points on the board. And the only way you can do that is by drawing fouls and getting to the free throw line. There's two minutes left in this quarter. Every time a foul is committed, you're going to go to the free throw line, but you got to make your free throws. And unfortunately, Cody Justice not able to make free throws on that trip to the free throw line. And not really what you want when you're down 14. Parsons, a little shake and bake. Ooh. Oh, how pretty was that? Well, million dollar move, just couldn't finish though. I said it, stay aggressive. But you got to make free throws. Last time Cody was there, he went 0 for 2. Well, makes that one. Thank <laughs> you. 
makes both of those. Still a lot of time. If you can... Well, I mean, 10 minutes is a lot of time. Fourth quarter is 10 minutes long. And they go inside for the mismatch. Kicks it out. Shot clock is at four. Don't want to foul because you play good defense so far. And that's going to be a travel. Oh, that's going to be an offensive foul. Excuse me. So no hesitation there by the referee on the baseline. She says nope. That was definitely an offensive foul. Let's take a look. Oh, it was actually by uh, uh, on the baseline, not not the shot, not the shooter. It was um, it was DeAndre uh, Pinkney. He was getting boxed out before the shot even went off, and he just kind of pulled his uh, the defender in front of him down. So it was a very easy call for the referee. She was right there and saw the entire play. And so what I was saying right before that is, I feel like you know. Whenever you're down and you're heading into the fourth quarter, you got 10 minutes to play. 10 minutes is a lot of time. So much can happen in 10 minutes. But if you can at least go down double digits, it's just there's such a big difference for some reason mentally, 10 and 9. I know it's only one, one point, but 9 is three possessions. 10 is absolutely four possessions. So, well, we weren't able to do it on that basket, but they're going to get the ball back. They need to get a stop here, though. As the Bears, usually a little bit of the clock, and turns the corner, not able to make the basket, but ends up drawing the foul. So, going to go to the free throw line. And number 22, Ola, he's had some nice minutes for Voluntari. As he is going to be called for the foul. Well, 45 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Again, I repeat, it was tied at half, folks. 35 apiece, and what an offensive outburst by the back and Bears. They almost have 30 points in this half. Cody Justice, he gives it up. Fiesel, ooh, Keyshawn Fiesel. Big three-point bucket by him. Well, it's a 10-point game. There's about five-second differential. Four or five-second differential. And they come up with a steal plenty of time. They don't need a rush. There's about 10 seconds. Can they cut it to single digits? Cody gives it up. Nice penetration. Didn't settle. Wanted to draw the foul, but couldn't, I think. And not able to score in that last possession. But with how things went during that third quarter, you have to be happy if you are a CSO Voluntari fan only trailing by 10 at the end of 30 minutes. Woo! Talk about championship basketball, folks. The Beckham Bears with an enormous third quarter outpouring offensively. They also did their job defensively. I don't want to take away from their defense because I think their defense led to good opportunities offensively. But, you know, it was really their shooting. They're sharing the ball. They are up 10 over uh, Voluntari, 53-63. Uh, and I'm going to take a quick look at the statistics for you guys. Uh, Fiesel for vol uh, Voluntary, almost, well, he's sniffing out a double-double. He has 11 points and six rebounds. He knocked down that big three, uh, the possession before their last possession. Obviously, uh, Trevon Allen can't say enough about the way that that man has played tonight. 26 points. Every time they've needed a bucket, he has come up for them. He's shot 9 of 11. So he is having an absolutely superb game. And then after that, they only have two players in double digits. And like I mentioned, it's hard to win if you only have two players in double digits. So who's going to step up and have a big fourth quarter for CSO Voluntary, we will find out. And let's take a quick look at the Back and Bears statistics. Obviously, Pinkney, <laughs> great, great third quarter. He was a big part of his team's uh, uh, offensive outpouring. He has 18 points now, four or five from three-point range. Parsons getting to the basket almost at will. He has 14 points. 
And Ryan Evans, well, he had seven in the first half, and he still has seven now. So really, it was all about uh, Pinkney and Parsons in that third quarter, and then contributions from teammates here and there. And like I said, huge, huge scoring outpour, 28 points in one quarter for the Back and Bears. Well, quick three-point shot is no good, but they're going to call a foul going against uh, Churchill. And again, it was what we saw in the third quarter um, that actually went uh, against Voluntari. You have to let the offensive player who shoots lands where they take off. Obviously, if they shoot and fall forward, no. But especially for outside shots, shots around the three-point line, you have to safely let your players land. And that's the foul that we saw there. So we're going to see three uh, free throw attempts here. Well... That's the way you come in and your first possession, you take 11 seconds off the game clock and you have an opportunity to go three of three from the free throw line and you do. And like I said, anytime the score is in single digits, you always have a feeling no matter what kind of a time is left on the clock that you're gonna be able to come back. Well, it's hard to come back when the Bears have so many uh, threats offensively and clearly they're starting just where they left off that third quarter outpouring 28 points as we see Parsons come up. Sorry, not Parsons. I think it was Bolin who scored on that bucket. Well, another foul. Uh, going to go against the Bears and you know when you're the team trailing if you can put the other foul, uh, other team into foul trouble early in the quarter it's also definitely advantage an advantage well Cody Justice he's been quiet all game long but he's not going to stay quiet hopefully in this fourth quarter as he knocks down his three point basket And that's actually his first three of the game. His fifth point of the game. I mentioned how big of a game he had yesterday as that shot is no good by Bowlin. Justice made one. Make that two! Well, do you leave the best for last? Cody Justice says, yeah, I do. As he is knocked down six points, six consecutive points, I should add. And that 10-point lead is now only a four-point lead for the Bears. And, well, if you're going to leave a shooter open... I'm not saying it was a bad shot, but if you're going to leave a shooter open, not a bad idea to leave uh, Michel Dioff open at the three-point line. It's not his strength. I'm not saying he's not capable, but it's definitely not his strength uh, where he typically scores the majority of his baskets. Ballin gets it up. Ryan Evans, he's been quiet. And that's going to be another foul called on the shooter. So he's going to go to the free throw line for uh, three free throw attempts. And we've seen it all game long. They, the referees have called it like this all, I was going to say weekend. It's not a weekend. You know, the semifinals and the, the bronze medal and the finals, you, you protect shooters. And it's really important, I think, that referees protect shooters. And players know that's how the game is called. And if I'm not mistaken, this is the third or fourth uh, three-point attempt uh, and foul uh, uh, protecting the shooters by the referees. So you have to know this if you're a defensive player. Thank you. 
Sorry, a little bit of trouble with my uh, the the court microphones and then my microphone. So if you heard some static there as well, that's going to be an AM one. And I was just about to talk to uh, talk about uh, Ryan Evans free throws, but it doesn't matter. Where in on the offensive end we have an AM one and a strong basket made by uh, Keyshawn Fiesel. So opportunity for a three point play. Sorry about that. A little bit of an issue with the uh, some of the sound uh, court microphones. If you heard a little bit of static, 69-64, seven minutes and 15 seconds left. Well, make it 69-65 after that free throw. So two possession game. Lots of time, plenty of time to be played. This is what a championship basketball is all about. The European North Basketball League. And that's going to be a foul. Not a bad foul. Off-ball foul. They had fouls to give. You didn't want to give a, a wide open look to a pink knee underneath the basket. Bowlin gives it up. Well, apparently he is human because he just missed that shot because he has been playing like he is superhuman this game. And I want to take away from his game with that air ball, but he has 18 points, four rebounds, two assists, and he is four of six now. He was four or five before that, so... Even even the superhumans do miss every now and then, as we saw by DeAndre Pinckney on that last shot. They go inside. Ooh. Oh, not a bad option. Not a bad little look. Parsons, nowhere to go. And Dio's shot is no good. Well, we saw uh, Cody Justice, who has a ball in his hands right now, make a couple big three. Oh, make that three of three in this quarter, folks. He says, you know what? Just give me the ball. I am going to put this team on my back, and that is exactly what he has done. He cuts the lead to one. Look at this. Look at that. Well, it is a timeout. It is a one-point lead. The Bears have led most of the second half. And there's still six minutes to play. Voluntary trailing by one. And a timeout for the back-end Bears. Well, I think that was a good timeout by Coach uh, Ander Somer of the Back and Bears as momentum had definitely shifted a little bit with that uh, last three-point basket by Jody uh, Cody, excuse me, Cody Justice as he is 3-3 three three in this quarter alone from three-point range. He had the big game yesterday, 28 points with their one-point win. And he had a slow game. It took him a while to get warm. 
They said, when is he going to come alive? And he has definitely come alive in this fourth quarter. Let's see what the Bears are going to do out of the timeout. Well, Parsons, nice sweep and drive baseline and draws the foul. They get the ball in. Malik Parsons goes to Evans. Evans shot. It's good. So a nice little action out of the timeout. Oh, that three-point basket could have tied the game for the first time in a long time, but it was no good. And now Parsons, penetration kick. Evans hit the last two-point bucket. Bowlin, ooh, finds the cutter and not able to convert, but he's going to go to the free throw line. Free throws. Back up to a five point lead. Five minutes left. As Cody Justice says, there's a little bit of sweat on the ball. Do you mind wiping it off? Because I don't want that ball to slip, leaving my hands. I think Cody Justice, if I'm not mistaken, he had two points heading into the fourth quarter. And he now has 11 points. 3-3 three, three in this quarter from three-point range. Well, there you see the step-out defense. They have to step out on him. But guess what? That leaves that man open. And I talked about the... Uh, Superhuman performance by DeAndre Pinckney for the back and bears and Trevon Allen has also had a superhuman performance except sometimes the superhumans also miss. Good fight for the rebound though gives another opportunity to voluntary voluntary now. They get it to Justice. Justice had two defenders on him. Penetration kick, extra pass. Allen goes all the way to the basket. And good job there. Nice patience, finding the best shot and the best player in a scoring opportunity there by Voluntary. Evans. A little spin baseline. That's a tough shot to defend. It was no good, though. Justice comes up with a rebound. He's been the hot hand in this quarter. He has a little bit of light. Oh, no. Goodness me. What a fourth quarter by that man from Arizona, Cody Justice. Well, as I was celebrating, a foul happened, and, <laughs> and we're going to have a, a Malik Parsons. So it's a tie game. It hasn't been a tie game in a very long time. As the back and Bears, they jumped out to, I would say, a quick lead in the third quarter. And, uh, you know, they finished the third quarter up 10. They had a 28-point third quarter. And slowly, Voluntari chipped away, chipped away, chipped away, and have now, while they find themselves down two, they had it tied. So anything is possible, and that's why this sport of basketball is so great.
Justice gets it back. Trips. But it's going to be a tripping foul. And that is going to be the back and Bears 14 foul. It wasn't a shot, so ball is going to be on the baseline. Oh, good defense. And then, ah, oh yeah. Bowlin. I mean, it's easy for us to critique when we get to watch it in slow motion <laughs> after the play. Look at this. Yeah, I mean, it, it's actually an easy call <laughs> to make when we get to watch it like that. Um, obviously, the fans, the players, they don't really believe that's what happened. But it's easy for us to say, no, I think the referee absolutely made the right call. Well, new shot clock. They get it to Justice, the hot hand this quarter. He gives it up to the hot hand all game long. Trevon Allen, Allen splits the defense. And that shot, no good. And how about that head man? Oh, what an M1. Great body control is DeAndre Pickney. And a great heads up play from the beginning. Look at this. Doesn't turn the ball over. He knows that DeAndre Pickney was up ahead and just a great pass. And nice body control is able to make the basket and earn himself a trip to the free throw line. And that, that good head man pass was by uh, Noah Churchill, I believe it was. Not, if I'm not mistaken. Well, what was a tie game about a minute ago is now a five-point lead for the Bears. And aggressive, aggressive defense on Cody Justice. And <laughs> way to silence the crowd is Allen. Another three-point bucket for him. And good patience. Get it into the low post. The high post cuts to the basket as soon as his defender turns his uh, turns his head to see where the ball is. And nice move there by Michelle Diof to flush it home. Take no risks. Got to score that. And they force a turnover on the other end. So good offense, good defense. Last couple possession by the Bears. Baseline penetration, no one got open. Bowlin gets it to Churchill. Churchill to the corner. A little bit of a hang time. And I think it's going to be called an offensive foul. It was Gustav Knudsen. Let's see here. I think that's a great offensive foul call in my opinion. But I'm also not a ref uh, referee, though. Two well, two minutes remaining. It's a four-point game. This is what championship games are all about. And nice roll, nice finish, nice find. As Keyshawn Fiesel is able to get two more points. And I think there's a substitution. That's why uh, the ball was stopped. And it's going to be two, two minutes and under in the game. You can make a substitution. And that's what we saw happen. Even if it's not a dead ball, if it's on a made basket, you can make a substitution. Well, on the court now, we have, who do we have? We have Bowlin. We have Fiesel. Parsons. Dioff setting the screen. Parsons. Quick first step. And well, they had a, 
they had a chance on the initial layup. They had a chance on the putback, and it was no good. And now Cody Justice, who has had a great fourth quarter, quiet all game long, but turned things around. Oh, I thought he was going to let that one fly, and that was going to be deep. And that one, no good, but they got the offensive rebound. Rebound is no good, though. We got a minute remaining. We got a two-point game. Back in Bears, can they go up? Two possessions. No need to foul. You got to get a stop. You got to play good defense. You got to move your feet. You got to box out and rebound. And that is not what happened. And I don't know if it's... Let's take a look here. Okay, so we have... Okay, so the foul went against uh, Jay Schumat, number 32 of uh, Voluntari on the, uh, he was trying to box out, kind of hooked him, and then he ran into the uh, shooter as well. So that's why we see DeAndre Pickney at the free throw line right now. Can he make it a two-possession game? Can he at least make it a three-point game? Well, that shot rolls in, and there's the trophy. This is what they are playing for, folks. It is the EMBL championship game. Well, you hear the chants, and I think they are definitely warranted. He had 13 points, nine rebounds last night, has been averaging 17 points, just under eight rebounds a game in the EMBL. And no surprise, Coach uh, Bagetsky wants to call the timeout. Imagine he's going to advance the ball. There is just under a minute to play here in the finals. It's a two-possession play, a two-possession game. What do you do? Do you go for a quick two or do you go for a quick three? What do you do defensively? Do you go for a steal? Do you take the foul? Well, we'll find out soon, folks. Well, he's going to coach uh, one of the ball in the front court. So let's see what he has drawn up. Forty six seconds left in the game. Sorry that uh, that number is a little off for those of you watching online. Well, let's see what they run. They don't need a quick shot. They need a good shot. And it was tipped, so they're going to get the ball back. Shot clock, though, is at 6, 5. And it's going to be a traveling call. As great defensive possession by the back and bears as Gustav uh, Knudsen wants his teammates, his fans, everyone to get involved. As you see him hyping up the crowd. So a big, big defensive stop. Well, we got 29.8 seconds through a 30 second game, folks. Four point game. You got to steal or you got to foul. Or force an eight second backcourt. And now they foul. And 
Both teams in bonus are going to go to the free throw line. Still a lot of time left, but the issue is that with the, the difficult third quarter, I say difficult, it's because, you know, they were outscored by 10 in the third quarter, 28-point quarter by the back and bears. Coach uh, Bagetskis had to draw up, he had to use two of his uh, two of his timeouts. He just used a timeout on the last offensive possession. So now he actually has no timeouts. And these coaches are experienced. These players are experienced. Obviously, coach has something up his sleeve that they have gone over and worked on before. But with that shot right there, Well, it's a five-point game. Can he make it a six-point game? No, he can't. So, still two possession. Allen slips, almost turns it over. An extra pass. That three-point shot is good. It is still a game, folks. It is not over. Jay Schumat with a big three-point bucket. Look at this. Allen slips. And they almost turn it over here. That was Fiesel falling. Schumat gets it, puts it up. This game is by nowhere close to over. It is a two-point game. You got to go for a steal or foul real quickly. Like I said, there's no more timeouts, though, for uh, Voluntari. Whew. Let's see what Coach uh, Summer wants to do with the back-end Bears. Well, that's the trophy. That is what they are playing for, folks. See a couple highlights from the end of the game. That was a travel call going against Justice. Allen slips. They come up with the ball. Big three-point basket by Jay Schumat. Well, they're going to advance the ball. 5.2 seconds left. Like I said, you gotta, you gotta steal or foul immediately. Let's see what the Bears have drawn up on this play. And they get to foul. So they get to foul within a second, 1.2 seconds. So it was a pretty good foul. Four seconds is a lot of time. It's a two-point game. Best thing to do if you're Skylar Bowlin is to make both shots. Makes the first, so it's a three-point game. You make the second, and no matter what, it's a two-possession game. You miss. You give up a long rebound. Who knows? And he did miss, but the boxer outer, it's not a word, stepped in too early, so he's going to be rewarded another free throw. And rattles in the second, so it's a two possession game. And they got four seconds. You don't want to foul. Well, that is it, folks. What a game. What a comeback by Voluntari. They just did not have enough at the end of the game to pull off the big win as the Beckham Bears. They are crowned ENBL champions of the 2023-2024 season with a win over CSO Voluntari. And what a championship game we had for you. 
What a game. It ended up being a four-point game. Absolutely incredible. Winning on their home court. Ballin, he missed he missed the second of a free throw, but a lane violation gave him another one, makes the second, and then he gets to go and knock it down and make it a four-point game. And you got to love when teams win at home. And they get to enjoy this and celebrate this with their their home crowd, supporter, fans, family. It really, it's an incredible, incredible experience. And that is what you are seeing and feeling here tonight. As, well, no surprise, coach says we got to go shake the other team's hands. And a lot of respect by all these players, coaches. And you gotta you gotta tip your hat because I think at some point during that third quarter quarter, Voluntari maybe could have said, Well, you know what, we just don't have enough in the tank, but that is not what they did at all. They came out, they had a great fourth quarter. I gotta give props to Jody uh, Cody Justice. As he had a great fourth quarter. He was a little a little quiet all night long. Um, but unfortunately just not enough to get it going. As well, we see the celebration and we see the interviews and we're going to stick around for the presentation as well. Um, and we're going to get to watch and enjoy and hopefully we'll see some highlights from that fourth quarter because there were a lot of highlights in the fourth quarter. Really, it was the third quarter back in Bears. They came out, they scored, they outscored. Uh, Voluntari 18 to 28 in that fourth quarter. Voluntari out outscored back in Bears 28 to 22. But they just couldn't really pull off the comeback, and time was not on their side. As we get to see the celebrations, and I'm sure there's going to be some popping of champagne in the locker rooms after, as we have the uh, we'll have the medal uh, medal ceremony as well as a trophy celebration. We'll talk about the MVP of the Final Four. We'll talk about the All-Star Five as well. That will all be coming up now. But enjoy, enjoy watching some of these celebrations that are happening right now. Like I said, we're going to get to uh, watch a little bit of these celebrations and then we will have the, the awards for uh, fourth, third, second, and first place. They're just setting everything up right now. They're already talking about the champagne. Hey Y'all see what happened, man. We got it done, man. Big dogs, man. Danish basketball, mocking bears, man. First place, we made history. Shout out to all the fans back home in the U.S. Watch me and all my teammates, man. We appreciate y'all's support. We appreciate everybody that came out, man. We could have did it without y'all. I uh, love that. I hope you heard that. That was uh, DeAndre uh, Pinkney giving a shout out to to Danish basketball, all of the supporters of the Back and Bears. Obviously, gave a little bit of a shout out to his family and friends back home in the U.S. watching. He's got to be a candidate for uh, MVP. 
Um, and we'll take, I'll give you a quick rundown right now while we're watching a little bit of the celebrations as well. So we had uh, from uh, Voluntary, uh, Keyshawn Fiesel, great game by him, 16 points, 8 rebounds. He had 13 and 7 yesterday in the semifinal game. Obviously, uh, Trevon Allen, <laughs> player of the game for me. He had 31 points, 11 to 15 shooting, 7 and 9 from three point range. And then maybe a little bit too late, Cody Justice, 14 points. He was 4 or 6 from three point range. He only had two points heading into the fourth quarter, so obviously a big, big fourth quarter. Uh, uh, for him as well as other players who contributed. I'm just highlighting some of the top scorers. And now let's take a quick look at the Back and Bears from Aras Denmark winning this year's ENBL championship. And well, they wouldn't be here if it was not for the man we heard talking earlier, DeAndre Pinkney, 23 points, superb game. He had five rebounds, three assists, and I also thought, I mean, you can really talk about a lot of players. Malik Parsons, he kind of got them going, attacking the basket. He had 16 points, 4 assists. What about Ryan Evans, 12 points, 10 rebounds. Uh, Bowden, 11 points, 7 boards, 5 assists. Really, everyone who came in, they contributed. I thought, especially in the first half, first uh, first substitution of the game, Sylvester Berg, number six for the Bears. His intensity, his intention, his energy. He wanted to win this. He wanted to take home the trophy tonight. So big, big, big congratulations to the Back in Bears winning this year's European North Basketball League Championship. They beat... Well, you're hearing the MVP scouts uh, chant, <laughs> chants, excuse me. They beat uh, Basket Club uh, Shaolay yesterday, 77 to 90. They knocked off CSO Voluntari today, who beat uh, Liège Basket from Belgium, 79 to 80. And we're just, we're still setting up. Are, we're still about five minutes away. Uh, we're about five minutes away. Well, they're going to celebrate tonight, but pretty sure they have a game on the weekend in the Belgium League. <laughs> well, Cody Justice, obviously a little bit frustrated and talking, maybe disappointed. Maybe disappointed a little bit in himself, but disappointed that he didn't maybe start more aggressive. Like I said, all four teams playing today, they had a quick turnaround. They had to be ready to go and play less than 24 hours after their last game. So we are moments away from the medal ceremony. So if you have time, stay tuned because it's going to be fun. Like I mentioned, stay tuned. Takes a little bit of a while to set up these kind of uh, ceremonies and a little bit of organization. There it is, the EMBL Championship Trophy. What they played for all season long. You heard it in the intro. I mean, I hope you did. 
nine different com- uh, countries participate in this year's ENBL league. 15 total clubs and every year it is growing and growing and a lot of it has to do with the fans and the people you see standing in the background of that trophy. It's all about the fans and growing your sport maybe in smaller countries where basketball you know hasn't always been the name the main sport and this will help with that well we have the trophy presentation coming up good evening spectators and good evening organizers welcome to the european north basketball league's third season's award ceremony in denmark Aarhus. I'll let you listen to the uh, announcer because he is better than I am and I'll chime in when is appropriate. We would like to welcome, so please give a big round of applause for the European North Basketball League President, Igor Sanders. <laughs> European North Basketball League Secretary General, Edgar Sanders. Well, Ego and Edgar Sanders, obviously the CEO and the, the Secretary General of the EMBL. The EMBL Masterpiece Trophy, Armands Jakobsons. <laughs> President of Bank Bears and owner of Hammerhoff Group, Klaus Hammerhoff. We're just announcing who are going to be, um, who it's who, and who are also going to be presenting awards. CEO and owner of another club, main sponsor of Bagnes, Jose and Bori, Fleming Asmussen. They talk about sponsors. Obviously, sponsors, partnerships are a big reason why the EMBL even exists, but also why a lot of these clubs exist who play in them. It's all about, uh, it's all about the, the fans, like sponsorships, and, and partnerships. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Please welcome our fucking four referees. From Denmark, Andrada and let's not forget the uh, referees who have refereed this uh, final four event. Uh, so like I said, they're evaluated all year long. And they are selected from the countries that also play in it. So it is a big honor for them to, to have an opportunity to to referee in a league like this and also in their domestic leagues as well. And to represent the tables of fishers team of representatives here in Denmark from Bagen Bears, Klaus Martinsen. And the last referee from Poland, Radius Sapolsky. Well, like I said, a big congratulations to all of the referees who participated all year round, but then who were also at the final four this year.
Cordit, the CEO of the Backham Bears. So great job what he has done with this club and yes be happy yes be happy we're seeing all these fans in the gym as well because we love the basketball, we like watching the players, but there are a lot of things that happen behind the scenes for the reasons why these kind of clubs even exist. And it's everyone around, the sponsors, the partners, the CEOs, the people who don't even get paid, but they work for the club. Let's talk about the All-Star Five. Welcome to the first fan on board, Mr. Jorsic of Valentura. Well, Cody Justice, he had that big, big game yesterday in the semifinals, 28 points. Today he had 14, 12 of those coming in the fourth quarter when they needed them the most. He is an All-Star Five, so congratulations to Cody Justice. Malik and from the back in Bears, you heard the crowd, Malik Parsons, 19 points yesterday, 16 points today, did absolutely everything they needed him to do. Controlled the team, controlled the tempo. From BC, Cholet, Shaquille Keith. From BC, Cholet. Shaquille Keefe had a slow start today, really slow start. They went to him in the second half a little bit more, but 21 points yesterday is average just over 14 points a game on the season. So a big congratulations to Shaquille Keefe. From Valentura, Trevor Allen. And from CSO Valentura, Trevon Allen. Big, big game tonight. It's got to be a record, in my opinion, for a final. I'm going to have to go back and look at some statistics from the years past. 36 points, averages 15 points a game on the season every time they needed a big bucket. I think he was injured yesterday. Almost. Almost did whatever they needed to get the win. Just was not able to peel it off. But big congratulations to Trevon and Allen. And final player of the All-Star team, EJ Anjoski of RSW Yes. Well, EJ Anjoski, <laughs> can't talk enough about that man and how good he was today. He did absolutely everything that was needed. He had 14 points yesterday. His average 16.7 points a game. Almost willed his team to the finals. So congratulations, EJ and Anoski. Very big congratulations to this year's All-Star Five. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time. Well, to big find congratulations out to the All Star Five. As the MVP of the Final Four. And now coming up, the MVP of the Final Four. <laughs> well, he wasn't an All-Star 5, but guess what, folks? He was the MVP 
of this Final Four, DeAndre Pinckney. He did everything today, yesterday. Well, let's talk about what he's done in the past leading up to this game. Because there's a reason why he should be an MVP. He had 13 points, 9 rebounds yesterday. 17 points, 7.7 .7 rebounds on the season. Mr. MVP, DeAndre Pinckney. He finished today with 23 points, 5 rebounds, and 3 assists. So congratulations to that man. Some nice uh, new kicks for the MVP. Looks like it's a massage pistol type thing. So a big congratulations to the All-Star 5 and this year's MVP of the 2023-2024 European North Basketball League Final Four. There are your MVP and your All-Star 5s. ceremony of the teams in European North Basketball League season 2023-2024 the fourth place goes to BC Cholet well, fourth Please place welcome. trophy goes to Basket Club Cholet from Lithuania big congratulations they're the only team that has made it to two final fours in a row and they played last year in the Final Four. This year, unfortunately, falling in the semifinals and then falling also in the third place game. But good things happening in that club. And I imagine they're a team that we are going to see, a club and a team that we're going to see around for a very long time. Please give a big round of applause for the full team of BC Chalet, Sean Allen. LJ Paul. Uh, it's just going all over the, the players, the coaches. And ben like I said Vassi. earlier, you know, it's not just the 12 Thomas players Vassi. on the roster. There's the head coach, Shaquille there's assistant coaches, there's video analysis, there's player development, there's head physios, assistant physios, strength and conditioning coaches. So a lot goes into having a successful team and having a successful club. Sergius Nagris, physiotherapist Matrima Stura, project manager Stasis Kadesius, and project manager Markas Tavasauskas. PC Genoma, ladies and gentlemen. Ibrahim Duampia, Milos Boschovic, 
2024. From Denmark, from Aarhus, from right here in Sparkas, Denmark, Basketball Center, give it up for Bergen Bayern! Well, a big congratulations to the Back and Bears on their championship. They are the 2023-2024 EMBL winners. And you hear the fans. They were waiting around. They wanted to celebrate this entire time. And it is going to be a party in Aras, Denmark tonight. I am sure of that, folks. It started with nine countries, 15 teams, one team standing at the end. What a performance from a lot of these players. It's been an absolutely great league. It's only their third year. This league is not going anywhere. They are going to be around for a while. That is for sure. You heard it, they're celebrating some of the players who weren't able to suit up tonight, some of the young players, some of their formation player formation players, excuse me. And a big big congratulations. I you know sometimes coaches aren't talked about enough, but you also have to celebrate the coaches. Anders Somer winning the ENBL 2023-2024 championships and you know a former player now coach I'm sure he's going to live, give a lot of credit to his assistant coach to his entire staff the medical staff the young players the people who are coming up the people who are sticking around the people who have stuck around and so a big big congratulations to the back and bears from Aras Denmark as they are about to celebrate their trophy. Well, they're going to celebrate. And they started celebrating as soon as the buzzer rang. And they're going to be celebrating all night long, that is for sure, but it is well deserved. Nine countries participated in this year's ENBL League. Fifteen teams and one team were crowned champions. And that was the Backen Bears from Denmark. So a big, big congratulations to them and their entire organization, the club, from the president and everyone down. And we wish you the best of luck in the rest of your season. And hopefully we will see you for many, many years more participating in this championship. And I love seeing everyone excited and celebrating. Well, from myself and Shona Thorburn, thank you for tuning in to the European North Basketball League Championships. A great game was had in the bronze medal game and the championship game. You couldn't have asked for a better game. It was tied at half and the back and bears ended up pulling off a four point win over uh, Voluntari 
81 to 85 from myself and the European North Basketball League. Good night.